Okay, so welcome to this next video uh, in which we are going to discuss uh, the role of the GABA-A receptor mutations in um, epilepsy. So we're going to discuss three forms of epilepsy. We're going to discuss childhood absence epilepsy, we're going to discuss uh, generalised epilepsy with febrile seizures, and we're also going to discuss um, severe myoclonic epilepsy of infancy. Right, okay. So we'll start with childhood absence uh, epilepsy, okay, which is often abbreviated to C-A-E uh, for short. So childhood absence epilepsy. And what happens in childhood absence epilepsy is that the child suffers from absence seizures. So let me give you a scenario to uh, help you understand what an absence seizure is. So uh, let's say we've got our child um, who is happily playing football um, and let's say he's around eight years old so generally childhood absence epilepsy starts when you are between four and eight years of age year old okay so we've got some eight-year-old boy who's playing football and um, one moment he's fine he's running around nice and happily and then what happens is he suffers from one of these absence seizures. So he just zones out, effectively. He becomes completely uh, unaware of the world around him. He becomes unaware that time is passing. He loses consciousness. He becomes completely irresponsive to any uh, signals from the world around him. And then, after around 10 seconds, which is generally how long these absence seizures last for, he's back and he's completely fine again. Uh, he knows exactly who he is, and what he doesn't know is that 10 seconds have just passed where he was absent from reality, in, a, in essence. Uh, so this is what an absence seizure is. It doesn't involve the gem, you know, the archetypal seizure means uncontrolled contraction of muscle, uh, whereas absence seizures don't involve that. They just involve this loss of conscious awareness of reality uh, for around 10 seconds, basically. Or, well, actually, I don't know if it's loss of consciousness. It's a loss of, well, it must be, yes, a loss of perception of time, loss of... Um, all connection with reality, so all of your sensory systems are certainly shut down and you're unaware that 10 seconds have passed, so I would assume that you have lost consciousness. Okay, so that's what childhood absence epilepsy is. Uh, so um, one last little thing that I'll add is that generally the number of these seizures that you have in a day can vary between 1 and 50 a day, so you can have these very, very often if you're unlucky enough. Okay, so what causes childhood absence epilepsy? Well, basically, it's mutations in the gamma-2 subunit. And it's going to be the same for all these forms of epilepsy. So not just for childhood absence epilepsy, or CAE. It's also for uh, generalized epilepsy with febrile seizures, and also with uh, severe myoclonic epilepsy of infancy. They're all mutations in the gamma-2 subunit. And we saw that in all of those important GABA-A receptors, uh, we had a gamma-2 subunit. So, what do these mutations in the gamma-2 subunit cause? Well, they cause too little uh, activity of the GABA-A receptor. Through a variety of different mechanisms, what happens is you get under-functioning of that uh, gamma-2 subunit in the GABA-A receptor. Now, what that means is that the GABA-A receptor is now going to conduct or, well, it's going to respond less. Something, well, actually, there's many different things that can happen, but what it's going to lead to, basically, this dysfunction in the gamma-2 receptor subunit is going to lead to um, reduction in GABAergic transmission, basically, within the brain. And we know what happens if we reduce GABAergic transmission in the brain. Where's my picture of the neuron back again? Okay. No, not that. Here. Here's my picture of the neuron. Right. So if we reduce GABAergic neurotransmission in the brain, then it unmasks these excitatory um, inputs to the, all the neurons within the brain. Um, uh, which were previously being counteracted by the inhibitory inputs. 
So, what then happens is all the neurons of the brain start over-firing, and that's what leads to these absent seizures. Okay, right, so there we go. Now let's talk about the next form. So the next form is generalized epilepsy with febrile seizures. Generalized epilepsy with febrile seizures, which is often abbreviated to GEFs for short. So generalized epilepsy with febrile seizures. So I suppose I should explain to you what a febrile seizure is. So a febrile seizure is a a uh, more conventional seizure than the absent seizure. So it does involve the involuntary contraction of uh, skeletal muscle. However, it's called a febrile seizure because it is generally triggered by uh, a high temperature, basically. So uh, people with this uh, form of epilepsy will generally suffer epileptic seizures if they have a hot shower, for instance. Uh, so they are temperature uh, triggered basically. High temperatures will trigger the seizure and when you have that, that's known as febrile seizures. Okay, right. So, um, generalized epilepsy with febrile seizures is often abbreviated to GEFs. Okay, and they are conventional epileptic seizures, so they are uncontrolled um, contraction of skeletal muscle cells. Okay, right. Now, again, they are caused by mutations in gamma-2. And for some reason, they generally, uh, they generally only go up to the age of six years old. So they generally stop at the age of six. Stop at the age of six. Okay, so again, what happens in generalized epilepsy with febrile seizures is you have a mutation in gamma-2 subunit. Okay, now, uh, there is a specific mutation in the gamma-2 subunit that has been well characterized in the case of generalized epilepsy with febrile seizures. And this is the K328M mutation. Okay, so this tells you exactly what this mutation is. So, if we have the gamma-2 polypeptide here, so let's imagine this is the polypeptide of this gamma-2 subunit. Here's the amino terminus then you can count the amino acids. Here's the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, the sixth one. You can go all the way up to the 328th amino acid. Now, this should be K. Now, K is the single uh, letter amino acid code for lysine. So let me show you the structure of lysine so that you can appreciate what a big mutation this is. So I'll draw the structure of lysine as though it's a residue in a polypeptide. So here's the amino group, here's the alpha carbon, I'll draw the um, R group in a moment, and here's the uh, carboxyl group. So the structure of lysine then is that you have four methylene groups, so I'll just draw one, and I'll put brackets around it and put a four, because I'm lazy, and then we'll have an amino group right on the end. So that's the structure of lysine. Now, the amino acid M, the single letter um, M stands for the amino acid methionine. Okay, so now let me show you the structure of the amino acid methionine. Okay, so the structure of methionine is that you have an amino group here, okay, and alpha carbon there with a hydrogen off it, and then you have two meth methylene groups off this alpha carbon, which I think I can face drawing, okay? And then, whoops, you have a sulfur atom here, and then off that sulfur atom you then have a methyl group, so let me bring this up here. So you have a methyl group like so. So you can see that we've changed this structure hugely. We've now got this sulfur atom here, and uh, we've lost the amino group off the end there. So. K328 to a methionine. So the lysine at position 328 turns into a methionine. Now, basically, what this mutation does is it accelerates the rate of desensitization of uh, the uh, GABA-A receptor, basically. So GABA-A receptors with this mutant gamma-2 uh, subunit in 
they undergo this process of moving from being in the open state to being in the closed desensitized state much faster. Okay, and what if I put there? Desensitized. Oh dear. Dear me. Desensitized. I do apologize for that. Desensitized. I didn't spot that at the time. Desensitized. Sorry about that. Right. Okay, so they will move into the desensitized state much quicker, which means that the amount of inhibitory postsynaptic current these mutant GABA-A receptors are going to allow in is much reduced because they're open for far less time. So this is going to reduce GABAergic transmission, and if you reduce the inhibitory postsynaptic currents, then the excitatory postsynaptic currents are not going to be neutralized, and you're going to get uh, over um, excitation of neurons within the brain. So you're going to get a huge number of neurons firing that shouldn't be, and that's going to lead to our um, convulsions in generalized epilepsy with febrile seizures. Right, okay, so the final form of epilepsy now, uh, which is severe myoclonic epilepsy of infancy. Okay, and this is one of the worst forms, so severe myoclonic epilepsy of infancy. And this is often abbreviated to SHMI, or S-M-E-I, so of infancy. Okay, and it's so horrible that it's also got a separate name even from that. So it's also abbreviated to SHMI, but its separate name is also Dravet syndrome. So this is also called Dravet syndrome. So again, uh, severe myoclonic epilepsy of infancy, or Dravet syndrome, is associated with mutations in gamma 2, okay? And basically, it starts from a very young age. So from one year old, you're going to start uh, having seizures if you've got this uh, mutation, mutations in gamma 2, uh, which are associated with this. And generally what happens is these mutations occur on one side of the body. So one side of the body will start undergoing these involuntary muscle contractions, okay? And again, these are febrile seizures, so they are generally brought on by uh, exposure to high temperatures. Okay, and what's really pronounced in these seizures and why it's called severe myoclonic epilepsy of infancy is that they are really jerky. So myoclonic means jerks of muscle. So myo uh, means muscle, okay? Clonus means jerks. So this refers to jerking of the muscle. So um, these in these seizures that are occurring on one side of the body and which are uh, um, bro brought on by exposure to high temperatures, you are getting huge jerks of the muscle, and that's what's really notable in this form of epilepsy. Uh, then what happens uh, is, as, you, they, as people with this disease uh, get older, uh, they um, lose their heat sensitivity, so the seizures are no longer brought on by heat. However, they become more frequent, and uh, again, what remains is this very uh, strong jerking of the muscles. So, at one year of age, you have heat sensitivity, okay, and they're generally on one side of the body, so heat sensitive, uh, oops, heat sensitive, and they're on one side of the body, and they're very jerky, one side of body. Now, by the age of two, oops, two years old, uh, you have uh, lost the heat sensitive, so they're no longer heat sensitive. However, they're still very jerky and they occur more frequently, so the rate of them goes up. And also, with regards to the one side of the body, they become even more localized, so they are called partial seizures. So the difference between this severe uh, myoclonic epilepsy of infancy and the generalized epilepsy with febrile seizures in the in, is that in generalized epilepsy you get um, seizures that involve all the muscles of the body. So every muscle of the body will be contracting, well most of them. So it's all over the body. Whereas in severe myoclonic epilepsy of infancy you get what are known as partial seizures. So when you're young, you get seizures which are on one side of the body,
but then as you get older, by two years of age, they're getting partial seizures. So these are localized to specific portions of the body. So maybe it's just uh, the arm that is one arm on one side of the body that is undergoing uh, this involuntary muscle contraction. Whereas in generalized epilepsy with febrile seizures, the entire body will be undergoing uh, the seizure. Okay, so that's the difference between a generalized seizure and a partial seizure. Finally, uh, this is the form of epilepsy, or one of the forms of epilepsy, which is very photosensitive. So when you hear about people not being able to be exposed to bright flashing lights, uh, this is one of those forms of epilepsy that is photosensitive. So as they get older, if you expose them to bright flashing lights, this can induce uh, an epileptic seizure. Okay, so we've seen these uh, three forms of uh, congenital epilepsy, which are caused by mutations, inherited mutations in the gamma-2 receptor subunit. We've seen childhood absence seizures where children blank out for around 10 seconds at a time, okay, uh, a so-called absence seizure, and this generally starts between 4 and 8 years of age. We've seen generalized epilepsy with febrile seizures, which are these seizures of the entire body, uh, which are generally brought, brought on by exposure to high temperatures, and which generally uh, end by the age of six. And we've seen severe myoclonic epilepsy of infancy, which starts off when you're very, very young. By the age of one, you're having uh, these seizures on one side of the body, which are brought on by exposure to high temperatures. Okay, and the characteristic of these seizures is that they are extremely jerky. You have myoclonus. Okay, uh, however, as you get older, they lose their heat sensitivity and they become more localized. So they started off on one side of the body, but they become very localized partial seizures where just one portion of the body is undergoing uh, the involuntary contraction. And these uh, s uh, severe myoclonic uh, epilepsy of infancy patients uh, are also photosensitive, so bright flashing lights can trigger uh, an epileptic seizure in them. And that form of epilepsy is also known as Dravet syndrome.